What's up guys, it's just Shake Reviews, and behind me is a beautiful 2008 GMC Acadia SLT. Now you may be, uh, you may be wondering, this ain't my usual spot. That's because my car, which, wouldn't, which is a Toyota 2010 Toyota Corolla, as you guys know in Turbo, broke down the other day, so it's at the shop right now, and so my grandfather, who is has to mention lived in the nursing home has a car that didn't have this that he never drove because obviously he has dementia so my dad brought it over and i've driven this for a while so my car my car will be will be back in a few days but while i have the car why not reveal it so here i am so let's talk about the history of this car back in 2007 gmc wanted to replace the current gen pontiac uh, i think it's called the outlook and then the Zuzu, Avenger, and then the, a bunch of other cars, the GMC, forget, there's a lot of, a lot of cars, this car, this car itself replaced. Now, now back in Jesna, there, there was still a Saturn Outlook, but this car replaced, I believe, the Pontiac, the GMC, the GMC, and a bunch of others. I'll, I'll, list them all in the next description but may so why is it called Acadia I don't know I looked it up tried it everywhere looked everywhere no one said anything about why it's called Acadia so just the name I've named it Arcana because it's it drives like a girl and it's a it's a car it's Arcadia so Arcania Arcadia huh get it get it yeah I know both funny and then back, it got face up back in, I want to say 2017 with LED lights, but it wasn't completely changed. They changed a lot of things like the interior, the line, a lot of different things. And then, and then 2018, they redid the whole thing. But this is the first generation, one of the first ones to ever come out. And this is the SLT trim. What does that stand for? I actually do know that it stands for special, special luxury touring what that is is before denali i'm not sure if they had denali's back in chesney but for this car there was no denali until 2010. this this is the highest trim you can get for 2008. now this is on the lombada platform which could include the chevy Equin chevy traverse the equinox and the buick Wego. Or the cook or enclave. I forget which one. A few extra hard to remember. But pretty much what it is, it's a unibody car. And it's and it's a seven row or eight passenger seat car SUV. Obviously the thing's ginormous. And it's about it for history. I wanna go over the features and trust me, there's a lot of crap that's in this car, because this is one of the top SUVs you could get back in 2008. Now, this thing is powered by the beautiful 3.6 liter V6, making about 275 horsepower. And this thing has all wheel drive, so it will take off, even though it's a big SUV, which we will show. Now, without further ado, let's take a rock around this beautiful car. Take a look at the beautiful front end. I love this color. This color is known as burgundy, I believe. I don't have the the dealer tag with me so I'm not sure exactly what the color is called but the darker I love how it's not just a bright red it's a dark and beautiful red color it's absolutely beautiful now I don't really like the look of these headlights too much they aren't really the most attractive thing in the world but you know they're useful but they're not, they're not too ugly so they're not bad I love this grill design very bubbly shape I would say pretty nice These are the upgraded wheels. These are your 20 inch premium wheels, I believe. They're pretty nice, I quite like them. I've seen other ones with other wheels and I like these are much better. I mean, look at the way they're designed. Absolutely beautiful. Now we're gonna go this way. Make it easier, beautiful. Sorry, it's a little bit of a reversal. This car is very hard to maneuver in this tiny bit of a space. So I did, I did what I could. Now, the only thing the owner has, well, I guess owner, is because my dad is the man who drives this, 
and modified the uh, running boards mainly because they were it was hard this car was hard to get into with the running boards so he put the nice sub for my grandfather since he is dementia he is old he has a hard time getting in the car so these running boards help him get them in and it helps me a lot because this is a big car so slt if this if you don't see this badge it's an sle trim sle trim is a lower trim you don't get all-wheel drive, I believe, and a bunch of other stuff we'll talk about in a second. So here's the back end. It's pretty basic looking, but you know, you really get to see how big this car is from the back. Look how huge it is. Now, I believe this is just behind the, the, the Yukon. So, this is the second biggest SUV you can buy from Jim Moore. Folks doesn't name, which is crazy. And you can still buy their kit in now. It's just... A different gen different look. I like these head headlights. They're pretty nice. They're not the most attractive looking, but you know, they're pretty nice. It's pretty very identifiable. And you have your rear wiper. Sorry the car is it's dirty. It's been sitting on a tree. It really gets driven, so it gets a lot of dirt. I was gonna try and wash it, but I've been very busy with tests and a bunch of other stuff. But I just didn't have time. I wanted to get this done for you guys. Beautiful quad exhaust. Now this is not a mod. This car came with it, and it does sound pretty good when you're revving it on the road. But it's very quiet when you're just setting. So otherwise, I would rev it for you. All right, here is the key. I really don't like the key for two reasons. Well, I guess multiple reasons. This this is the ignition key. Now this is 2008. I understand if if this was a Corolla. Or something like that, where it was just where it was like this. Cause I expect it. This is Jim Rowan's. But this is a this once was one of the top of the line car you could buy from Jim Motors, and they gave you this. Look at this. It's pathetic. And look at it. Yes, it has your buttons, but so why can't it just be one key? I know that technology wasn't as advanced as it was back then, but can we just, can, could they leak on something like this? I mean, seriously, this once was a, like a forty, fifty thousand dollars car. I mean, seriously, get with it. Now you have multiple buttons. Obviously, you have your tailgate. Pretty nice. Pretty decent space. You do have back row seats. I've been there. I'm not gonna get back there, but I have been back there. It's not a lot of space, but it's if you have to fit adults back there, it you can. Um, I pretty I do like how much space you get, even with even if you have the seats up. So you can really go camping in this, go on trips. It's a good car. Got your nice buckles. You can tow. You can put stuff on. Yes, we still have the plastic on this thing because, like I said, we rarely drive it. You have your stuff you can put there. Or, and if you want to close the tailgate because it's pretty big, you can there press this button or the, uh, the, the button on the key fob again. Now, before we get in this car, I want to show you something. This thing has remote start. I'm not kidding. We now have... This is one of the coolest features of this of this car. This thing has remote start. I know what you're saying. How good this? This is 2008. Remote start wasn't a thing until now. Why does this thing have remote start? Well, that's because your remote is wanting to really market this thing up. So they put a lot of features like that, which I'll explain all of them in a minute. But this is one of the cool features that your remote specifically developed for this car and obviously other cars so they would sell more. So to do that, you press this button right here, the lock button twice, and you hold it. So it's a little weird. You can't hold it. It's a little weird to work. You can't hold it too long or not long enough. Otherwise, it will cut off or not do it. It's a very weird machine. But at least it does it. Now, now we got the engine running. Let's hop in. Let's see this beautiful bad girl. This is 2008, so no remote keyless access. Yeah. Sorry about the trees, guys. It's hard stuff. Why did you? Oh, I guess it shuts off. I guess it shuts off when you do the the hood. 
Well, then I guess, at least you guys know how the remote start works. All right, here's one of the bad things I don't like about this car. This is a, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is for GM in general, but this is really weird opening hood. Here's how you do it. You lift it, and you think, oh, I put right, it's, I just flip a latch, right? For two seconds now. You have to get your finger. Now I know where it is, so it's easy to pull up. Look at this. You have to take your finger and pull it to the right. You have no idea how annoying that was to get your finger on there and try and get that. And this grill is so unique, and that hood is so weirdly shaped, it's hard to get your fingers on there and push it. But once you know where it is, it's not that hard to do. So here is the engine. This is, the, like I said, this is the 3.6 liter V6, making 275 horsepower. A lot of power for a little engine. Well, I guess it's not little. It's a V6. Pretty, pretty good size. But if you look, what I don't like about it is the way they made the engine look. Not the way it's positioned, but the way it is in this car. This is a pretty good size engine for this car. But if you, you obviously see, it looks tiny. You think, oh, it's a little four-cylinder. If you didn't have that, I would say, oh, that's a little 1.8 little four-cylinder because that looks like the size of my, my Corolla's engine. But that's not. That's a, v, that's a V6. It's a big engine. So this one thing I don't like the design of it is the engine placement. It's I really wish they would have, you know, cleaned things up a little bit or make it or tick let the engine show more just to show that hey it's not a tiny engine and it won't and it's not slow this thing ain't slow guys my, i do like the way it, it looks there's not too much stuff everywhere it's easy to get to things it's pretty nice all right to close it a glove just press it like that pretty simple all right let's get in this beautiful car and i'm going to show you every single feature of this there is a lot so most of the video is on the features. If you want to skip to the drive portion, go right ahead. But say, but I recommend seeing all these features because trust me, there's a lot, a lot of them. First things first, like many cars of this this price point, you get something like this. Yes, it's a paper on. Like I said, we rarely drive this car. This is a G. You get your GMC emblem. I wish you would say something like Acadia or something like that, but you know, that's a nice little emblem. It's man metal. You get your leather seats. Now you have many color for this. This I believe is the white on black trim, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. Now it is hot today, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the car if that's okay. Here's how you do it. You get the key. That standing alone key. Like I said, I really don't like this key. Because look, it looks like it's from the 1980s. Here's how you do it. Put your foot on the brake, obviously. Now. You don't just pull it and start it. Watch what will happen. Okay, it starts. Turn the air down a little bit. So normally you can't really just turn it real quick and let it start. Like you do some other, like I do my Corolla. Always the car won't start. It has a weird anti-theft system to where if you don't crank it, hold, if you don't hold it for a second, it will cut, it won't start. And you think, oh, something's wrong with it. No, it's just weird that way. I don't know why GM did that. That's just that. One cool, first cool thing I want to talk about, this. I'm not sure if you can see it. That is a heads-up display. This is, like I, like I said again, this is the 2008 car. 2008. Why the heck is there a heads-up display? Well, that's because, like I said, this is one of the technologies that was specifically put in this car Obviously not developed. GM had hits at this place before, but this car had this just just to make it sell better. I mean, look, it's really cool. I have it set to the, uh, I believe, I call it the track mode, where you have your speedometer and your, and your tachometer and your gear. I can also change it to different things. What you do to do that, if you press this button right here, I can also move it up and down. It's really cool. To me, it turns the whole winch into like a little computer screen. It's such a cool thing. To change the look, you press this button right in the middle, if you're looking. Right there, and then I got my temperature and my drive. One thing I can't show you due to copyright is that when I'm playing on my music and my song changes, it will tell you what a song is playing. 
That way you're not looking at your radio or, or if you don't like something, you can change it. This is a really, really cool idea. Oh, from button. Then you can just show your tag, your speedometer, or the track, the track right now is showing you. This is a really, really cool idea that jammed in. I really like it. Now, this ain't the first car to ever have this. I believe the C6 Corvette were the first car to have it, but it's so cool that it's in this thing. Quite like the way that GMC did the interior. It's pretty nice. I mean, you get your nice metal, your nice gear shift, nice leather. The only thing I don't like is there's plastic everywhere. Look at that. This is plastic. That is. This is. There's plastic everywhere. And this is like a forty to fifty thousand dollar car. Yes, it's not a Denali, but can we at least have some leather? I mean, obviously this is your leather. This is nice leather. This is leather. This is pretty nice leather. But what can't other things be leather? I know GMC loves to cheap out, but this is kind of overkill on cheap out. I mean, look, there is plastic everywhere, everywhere, everywhere you look. Now, that, now, I don't really mind it because, again, it's a really nice car for the way it is. But if you are if you were buying this new, but you want plastic everywhere, you're paying 50 grand and you get all you get is a little bit of leather and plastic everywhere, that's not good. This isn't a luxury car, but again, this is the top of the line GMC. It's one of the, before the Denali, it's a lot of like 50 to 60 grand in this car. It's it's a lot. No, it's not worth that now. This car is worth about eight to nine grand, give or take, which is a good deal for what you get. Now you, now if you see, if you've been noticing this play, you have your CD, your, your climate control, your automatic. I'm sure you guys know how to work that. But wait, what's this? What's this right here? DVD? Is it? Yes, it is what you guys are thinking. This sucker is a DVD player. And then I want, and we'll look in the back. We don't use this, obviously, because we are for a. But that is a DVD player. That pops down, and you can plug in whatever movie you want. And this car did come with its own headphones. I do not have them, but it did come with a headphone you can plug in to the back, which I want to show you in just a sec. Plug in into the back to where you can listen to movies. And you can also, I'm not sure exactly if it'll work. I haven't tried it, but you can plug. These, this car has three AV outlets. If you don't know, know that is, that's an old way of connecting a lot of play, old PlayStations we use and stuff like that into it. So, if you want, you can plug in your Wii U or Wii and play some tennis or something right in your own car. Now, I wouldn't do that too much because, again, it's the, the whole battery situation and all. But, if you bought a spare battery, you can to plug in the, the game and you can hook it up and play your game all you want. I think that's a cool idea. Obviously, that's not in the main intention, but it's cool. You can do it. Now, another gripe I don't like about this car is this right here. This is a CD player, obviously. But this is a one CD player. Not a multi-CD, not a 6 CD, not a 12 CD. One. And I like and remind you, this was a 50 grand car. This is, isn't the base model. This is the SLT one, the highest trim you can get. Which is, actually, it is the highest trim car of the Akita you could get of this of 2008. Why the hell did they put one CD as an as a base option? Why not just go on and give us this six CD? I mean, you're already paying for the extra money for SLT and all the other crap that's on it. Just please give us to us, GM. Well, that's just GM, GM in general. They love to cheap out on every little thing they do. That's just Ford does the same thing, so don't be like Ford's better because they don't do that. Yes, get off your high horse. They do that too. Now, to show you different buttons, if you have this car, you're not sure, or if you're thinking of buying it, you have different stuff. You can show your info if you're obviously the music is not on, but to was you can control. It can tell you what the title is, what's playing, stuff like that. You can control, you can change the song with this button. You can have your radio functions, your menu. 
This is this is a lot of radio as well. See, so you, uh, you know, you get the gist. Well, you're probably wondering, what are these buttons do? Well, I'm gonna pr I'm gonna show what each of them do. This is obviously the an enter sign, but this button is actually really cool. We're gonna press this little button. Now, you know, obviously you see where the button is, so I'm gonna change it, and I'm and you're gonna watch and see what it does. This is how you view your settings. Yeah, now you can see a lot of the crap that's on this thing. Yes, it has a bunch of this cool stuff. It has a lot of cool stuff. If you want to exit, you go to the exit and you press this, oh, this check button. Which is really cool for what it is. That is really, really, really cool they put all that. I do wish it was a... Uh... Actually, I don't. This just has a name. Never mind. Never mind what I was going to say. But this is it's not bad. You can also press the info button and you'll also do that as well. It will tell you all temperature, your parking list is, which is which will show, the units, your tires, rear tires, remote. You can use this remote in the key. And you can There you go. If you want to go back to the dominant, press this button. You got hazards, different stuff like that. It's a nice car. I do like the way the mirrors got to talk about the way the shape. It's a really, really nice design. Not too, not. Too, I don't know why they made this thing really angular and sporty looking when the whole car is like a big boat. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. The thing drives like a big boat. Now, to show you something cool, this is um, uh, you do have your sunroof, but not just any sunroof. You have a one in the back. It's a little rear to learn. This does this part. And this one does the back. Not sure if you guys can see it. You have this. Now I don't know how to get this open so you can see it is. It's not wanting to move. I tried every button in the and this thing I can find, this thing won't move. I don't know why. Again, this is a car from 2008 and it is a GM, so not everything's gonna work 100% of the time. Let's go ahead and close everything. You really go on it. Sorry about that. You really gotta hold that. You've the only thing I really don't like about this car is the storage. Now I'm just thinking, Jake, you have this though. You have this. You can show your stuff, right? No. That's all you get. That's all you get, guys. That is all you get. This much space. I know. I know. I know. You press this button right here. You can slide it. And see, there's hardly anything in there. That's all you get. You can't lift it, you can't, there's not a little notification you can put your stuff in. This and that little cubby is all you get besides your glove box, which is kind of crappy. This is a big, big SUV. You would think they would give us a lot more storage space. So it's another thing I don't like about this car. Nice cup holders, they're pretty nice, they're pretty, they help. they're pretty big, I do like the size of them. My car, the car I usually drive, my Corolla, it has, not too, not too bad, I mean, it's, it's a good size, but really you can't really fit like extra large strings. This you can, obviously, but I do wish it was a little bit deeper. Now, besides that, you have your, down here, you have your heated seats, you have your button to open the trunk. Get a little cubby, you can put some stuff in, AV outlet, you know, windshield wiper for the back, you know, various stuff. But that's about it for this stuff you want. That's, I did, one thing about the steering I forgot to mention is this is all your audio controls. Does this have voice commands? I'm not going to try it because this is 2008 and we all know how easy, how wonderful GM's voice commands was back in this era. So I am going to mess with it. You have your cruise control, which I don't mess with. You have your little secret storage area that way. I swore I put my sunglasses. 
for now. It's pretty nice. Now, the only thing that you probably probably know is if you're a Chevy owner or a GM owner itself, you probably recognize this wheel. If you are a long-term subscriber, thank you again. Thank, thank you so much for watching all these videos all, all this time. You probably remember that this wheel looks identical to the 2013 Chevy Avalanche wheel. Well, that's because this is the wheel. This is the exact same wheel on the Avalanche and on this car. The only thing different, the badge. The only thing they did, it's the exact same wheel design. Like. That's kind of what you get when you buy from GM. A lot of the love parts are shared between them. Yes, Sierra does that too, but not as much as GM. GM loves to share parts with everything. This whole, I bet this is, I bet this right here is on almost every single GM you'll find. I bet it is. But besides that, there's not much to really talk about besides I really like the gauges. There ain't much to them, but I like them. I like the red color. I don't know why there's red, so much red everywhere. I like it because I like to go sporty, but this is a, a family SUV and it's a, there's lots of red. I don't know why a GM chose red. Of all the colors, my, my Corolla has this ugly yellow color, but I understand why they did that. But why red? I like it, but why? Just why this red? I mean, are you trying to be sporty? Yes, it's a sport utility vehicle, but just, I just, I don't get you, Jim. But besides that, not much to talk about. I'm going to put up my stuff, that way no one steals it. And we're going to get driving this thing. Alright guys, now that we're all suited, head mounted up, let's drive this beautiful car. To drive this car, this is on an automatic. This is the only, obviously it's an SUV, it's the only thing you can get in this car is an automatic. But to start to get moving, put the foot on the brake, and you pull it down just like normal. Now if you are wondering what gear you're in, if you're not sure, you want it down. This, but the heads up display will tell you in the small font. Sorry, I forgot the parking brake. It will tell you in the small, which is really useful. Now I want you guys to really pay attention to that heads up display, because it's going to change a different stuff. Now, I'm not going to take this on the road because I want to be able to talk to you guys as well. And I, am, I like to be, when I'm on driving on the road, I want to be as concentrated as possible. So, if you guys don't mind, we are just going to be going around in this neighborhood. Try it's pretty nice. It's a very comfortable car. I've been driving this car for about second day now and it's very comfortable sorry about that air noise this car constantly makes that noise it's the air conditioning but besides that this car is very very quiet now i did say this car is a sounds really really good and i'm going to show you in three two one Very nice noise. Now, it may, it does have a louder noise when you get in the higher RPMs, but I, remember, I was, when I first gunned this car, I was pretty surprised, like you guys probably were, about how, much, how loud this is when you gun it and how fast this thing accelerates. I expect this from a Corvette or a Camaro, but this is an SUV. Not just some little SUV, a big one, a ginormous one that probably weighs over, probably weighs over 5,000 pounds, and it can get up and go and make a, make that wonderful V6 noise. That's one thing I love about this car is that noise. That that noise makes this car so much more enjoyable. I'm not really a big SUV guys like you guys know, especially ones that are big, big one like this. But with that. With that noise, it just, it brings the more character to this car. And one thing I like about this car is, even though it's so ginormous, this has a lot of assists to help, to help you drive this big a machine. It has a parking assist, it has a, I didn't show it, it has a rear back, 
not backup camera, but a little part rear, rear parking beep system to where if you are about to hit something, it'll alert you, which is pretty nice. I really enjoy this car. This is, I will be glad to have my Corolla, but I quite like a Kenya. She is such a beautiful car to drive. And quick too. This thing is all wheel drive and I thought this thing would be very, very slow because it's so, how big it is. And yes, it's a V6, but still, it's still a, a big, S, big SUV. But no, this thing likes to get up and go and act like a sport car. My can this thing loves to get, loves to be gunned. It drives pretty nice. It is very comfortable driving this. One thing I like, I do like about SUV is how comfortable and stable they are on the road. When I'm driving a sport car or a very fast sedan, I'm not, it's not like they're not stable. It's just, they're very easy to flip to turn around and whereas this this likes to put its foot down it's kind of, and move around that's what i like about it now here is the roundabout which i when i write about uh quarter sec which i will show you guys the incredible turning radius because even though this thing is big it's not that bad look at that Look how easy that was in this big of a car. Now I don't, now if you're used to a little car like a Corolla or a Civic, this will be very, very big and different to you. Not, not just because of that steering, but everything about this. I'm used to my little Corolla and parking this car is like parking a whale. How do you do it? Well, lots and lots and lots of turns. Lots of patience. It's a pretty nice solid car. I like the way it drives. Now obviously it's a good get up and go. GM did a great job for this car. Now I know you're thinking, Jake, isn't this car gonna break? Actually, no. This car only has 25,000 miles. My grandfather, being old as he is, didn't really drive it much before he got dementia. And then after dementia, he didn't drive at all. So, this car has very, very few miles. So, if you're looking for one of these, generally go for one that ha doesn't have a lot of miles on it. And you should be fine. And anyway, no, what you're probably saying, it's a G GM, not, they're not reliable, yada, yada. Actually, this car is pretty reliable for what it is. GMs aren't completely horrible. They just don't last as long as, as, as a Toyota or a Honda. But as long as you are, watch the miles on this car, you can have this for a good while. We've had it for 11 years and it still runs and goes. So yeah. I quite like this car. There ain't really much to say about it because it is an SUV, but it's a pretty nice one. You get lots of technology for what you get. It's quite comfortable. I mean, I love these leather seats. This car is such a comfortable car to drive. Not that my Corolla is not comfortable, but I just love the way it just sways and it doesn't really care where you turn point it. It's such an easy car to drive and which is surprising because this is a big like i like i'll say again this is a big suv and most of them aren't the easiest to drive which i like because this is a very nice car to drive all right guys that's it for the for this review i hope you guys enjoyed it I will be do going back to the normal punk line when I get turbo back, but for now, I'm driving this beautiful car. And if you're thinking about buying one of these, do it. Just watch your mods, and I highly recommend getting the SLT trim. Look how much technology you get. You get that thing. That thing is one of the coolest things I've ever had seen on a car, and I highly recommend making sure it, when you get one of these, you make sure it has that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope I'll go in the honest review in just a few seconds. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. 
What's up, guys? Now, when I drove this car yesterday for the first time, I was a little nervous about it, mainly mainly because it's a big SUV, and I'm so used to Quill, and I'm like, I don't know, I just, it's just so big. But after driving it for the past, you know, for the past two days, I really, really like it. It's really comfortable. I'm not saying I want an SUV, but I... I really enjoy it. It's a really comfortable car. It's very stable the way it is. You don't feel like you're gonna tip over. Even though as big as it is, you actually feel like a king because you're so above everything else. You feel like you f you feel like the r king of the road. It's kind of how I feel like when I'm driving a truck, but I like to sim you get similar flame when you're driving an SUV, and they're much more safer than than sedans. But I still prefer my Corolla because I just like. The, how small it is and good gas smell and easy park it. But if you're looking, if you obviously have a family and can't afford a fun sporty car, get this thing. This is a beautiful car. It does have some fun to it and it has some good gas to it. I mean, that exhaust is such an addicting. I find myself getting it when I probably shouldn't, but it's just so addictive. It, it just makes me feel like a little kid. It's, it's kind of like a mini Corvette and a an SUV. If you can't afford a Corvette, get one of these. It may not be a V8, but it does damn good for a V6. It is one of the best V6s you can drive. What you can drive for a GM. Now, if you prefer the Chevy, go right ahead. Chevy's a good brand as well. Or if you want the Buick or the Cadillac, that's fine. Or the Saturn, wherever fits your fan, fits your boat. It's good, but. If you want the, if you really want something nice and don't want to spend too much, get this. If you have a kid or if you're um, just if you are a young young family, start to really like. I know I know a lot of people are having that situation. You need a big SUV? Get this. It's on right now. It's worth around eight nine grand with the mileage it has. And that's pretty good for what it is. You get a t like you like I said, you get a ton of technology. Technology that only now so that cars now have and and it's reliable. It's a good car. It gets good gas mileage. It gets about eighteen miles per gallon. I I luckily got a full tank from my dad when I first got it, so I haven't really worried about filling it up. But if but obviously, people who will be driving this every day, it's not that bad. It's a nice little gauge. Is there, the only thing I don't like about it is it doesn't tell you how many miles you have. But besides that, it does have a little gauge. You can gauge it like, oh, how much you guys have. So, just do that. But besides that, I really like this car. I love the interior. I love the different, I love the heads of display. I I literally would, if I really needed an SUV for, for this price one, I would really buy it. For that, I mean, it's just such a cool, th cool feature to have. Obviously, it wish it had a six multi CD player and crew better all the latest and greatest technology. But not everyone can afford a brand new car, and for what you get, you get lots of stuff. That's it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys liked it. Be sure to get like and subscribe. And don't worry, guys. I will be going back to the normal, normal feel when I would do reviewing someone else's car like I usually do back when I get my turbo again. But for now, I'm driving this beautiful baby and I actually am really glad I have it. It's such a nice car. So this is it for just your reviews and if you like to buy one of these go buy one of these, go to Jim Mellos of GMC. They have plenty of these on their lot and if you want to go pick one up for a good price and get good and even get a warranty, go to them. They have a I'll see I'll hit, I'll hit you up with a, if you're interested, just hit me up, and I'll send you, I'll refer you to a good salesman who won't cheat you out or anything. Gmails are a good, good brand. Alright guys, I'm, I'm, uh, that's it for tonight, and I'll see you guys later.